Welcome to the second episode of The Wrap Up, a gaming show about the biggest news in the gaming industry. Yesterday we have witnessed the longest Microsoft press briefing in the recent years and it was all dedicated to showcase Project Scorpio and the new game set to release on Microsoft's console family. The question on everyone's mind was how much is the world's most powerful console is going to cost and of course how is it going to be named? Project Scorpio is now known as Xbox One X. It is, as Microsoft claims, the world's most powerful console in the smallest form factor in Xbox console family history. Which is rather impressive. The console is set to launch on November 7th and will set you back 500 US dollars. However, if you don't want to upgrade, Xbox One S will get a permanent price drop and will cost only 249 US dollars. The console promised true native 4K games running at smooth frame rates. The console also features an Ultra HD Blu-ray drive. It is capable of HDR and supports Dolby Atmos. Inside of this beast you will find a custom 8 core CPU clocked at 2.3 GHz, a custom GPU based on Polaris architecture clocked at 1.17 GHz, which adds up to a total of 6 teraflops of power. On the memory front, the console has 12 GB of GDDR5 RAM with read speeds at 326 gigabits per second. What I personally find very interesting is that this console is the first one to feature a custom anti-screen tearing solution called AMD FreeSync. Players with a compatible TV or a monitor will definitely love this feature. Also, the flagship will get Xbox One X enhanced features later this year. So expect your favorite games to look even better if you're planning on picking up an Xbox One X. 4K TV owners will get to enjoy native 4K games and Microsoft claims that people who don't want to abandon their 1080p displays yet will get super sampled games that will look even better than they've looked before. Thank God for technology. As expected, all of your current owned Xbox One for peripherals will be compatible with the new Xbox One X console, and backwards compatible games from Xbox 360 are promised to look even better on Xbox One X. Talking about backwards compatibility, Microsoft has announced that starting later this year you will be able to play original Xbox games on Xbox One consoles. And now the games. It was really nice to see how Microsoft has learned from the mistakes in the past because this conference was dedicated to one and one thing only, games. You know, no Kinect, no TV or entertainment gimmicks. Because what do we gamers really want? Games. Anyways, the first showcase game was Forza Motorsport 7. A gorgeous looking game. We've seen a little bit of gameplay set in Dubai and another one on the rainy track. The game will run at native 4K and 60fps on Xbox One X. And it looks out of this world. We've been promised a whooping amount of cars in the game. 700 to be exact. Dynamic weather will also play a key part because what's a better way to showcase the power of a new console than weather effects? The game will launch on Xbox One and Windows 10 in this October. Assassin's Creed Origins got announced as well, running at 4K on Xbox One X. As the leak suggested, we'll be visiting ancient Egypt and playing as Bayek trying to clean the streets of Memphis and Alexandria from corruption. The game has been in development for four years and looks amazing. Ubisoft were kind enough to show a little bit of gameplay and boy did it reveal a lot how the game has changed. First things first, the eagle can now be controlled, a feature seen in Far Cry games, used to scout ahead and mark enemies. For me personally, I'm not sure if I'll use the feature at all, however, perhaps other players are into this. The biggest change to the franchise is that this installment looks to be more of an RPG. We've seen a level system in play, as well as an item system. No idea if the skills will be in the game, but I have a feeling that they will. We're sure to learn more during today's Ubisoft conference, and I am not sure if I was the only one, but what I've seen gave me a strong Witcher Freeze and Horizon vibes. And today, I am not sure if I save it in a good way. The game will launch on Xbox One, PlayStation 4 and PC on October 27th. Minecraft fans rejoice! Anyone? Anyways, the flagship franchise was of course showcased during the conference. The game will be getting a free 4K upgrade later this year. I really don't understand why they've emphasized free, as if this was supposed to come as a surprise. Hey guys, we're going to make you pay for extra pixels, y'all. Anyway, the game will also be cross-played across all of the systems, and that includes VR, PC, mobile and consoles. A super duper graphics pack, yeah I know, was also announced, promised to bring PC mod-like graphics to the console version. I bet you're going to be paying for it though, and Community Marketplace will be added to the game later this year. A Bioware's new IP anthem was showcased at the end of the conference, and I've got to say this, it looks beyond good. During the gameplay we've seen human populated cities, as well as the wilderness populated with not so friendly creatures. And can I say this, the faces look really good, I wonder where they were during Andromeda's development. Sorry, my face is tired from dealing with everything. 
From what I've gathered, the game will feature up to four player squads, looks to be open world, strong RPG elements because we've seen the level system being shown, the game will reward players for exploring, a usual practice in open world RPG games, and who can forget loot? A loot system was shown in action as well, so get ready to get addicted. I still have questions about this game and after doing some research, it seems that EA calls this game an action adventure with RPG elements. It is also rumored to be a response to Destiny, so this might get really interesting. The game is set to release on Xbox One, PlayStation 4 and PC in fall of 2018. Life is strange before the storm is real and it's coming. We've all knew this because of these nasty, nasty leaks a couple of weeks before E3. As the leak suggested, we'll be exploring Chloe's story when she and Rachel were inseparable. The game will act as a prequel to the first Life is Strange. Reveal trailer suggested a big graphical improvement over the first game, while still featuring that unique art style that the game is known for. I wonder if Chloe will get any superpowers like Max did, maybe forwarding time? Okay, I'll stop. The game is going to be episodic, no surprises here. The first episode will launch on August 31st, with episodes 2 and 3 to follow soon after. A very, very surprising reveal came from 4A Studios. Metro Exodus is the working title of a new game. Watching the E3 streams with my viewers, we were really caught off guard. We did not know if this was a Metro game or something completely different altogether. And that is because they've had a soundtrack of 28 days, weeks later playing in the background. Great score, by the way great score. For me personally, the gameplay shown looked a bit more on the CGI side, but if it proves to be real gameplay, then the game looks really promising. We can expect the game to launch on PC, Xbox One and PlayStation 4 later next year. Sea of Thieves got a lot of airtime yesterday. The co-op pirate adventure showed more gameplay and really good narration to be honest. Everything that we know about the game so far is that it is a multiplayer experience featuring a huge open world, full of treasures to be found. The game showed underwater treasure hunting, sea battles, dynamic weather, and what I like the most, exploring the world for treasures with your only lead, a riddle. The only question I have is if the game is going to be a uh, make-your-own story-like, or will it actually feature some kind of storyline? The game will launch on Xbox One and PC sometime later this year. On the other hand, there have been some first-party games that we knew were coming, and all we wanted was a little bit of gameplay, however, we did not get that. At least for one title. It is kind of worrying. Yes, Crackdown 3, I'm looking at you. When it was time to introduce this title, which promises to give you the power to destroy entire cities, I expected some gameplay showing it in action. And what we actually got was just a trailer showing players running around the city and killing bad guys. It is kind of worrying, really. At least for me. The game is set to launch on Xbox One and PC on November 7th. Also, while making this video, I read on Twitter that we'll see more multiplayer reveals soon, and the feature to destroy entire cities is only gonna be available on multiplayer. So if you thought that you're gonna be doing this while in single player or co-op modes, then too bad for you. State of Decay 2 got a longer trailer, but did not really show anything that we did not know until now. This co-op survival game will launch in 2018 on PC and Xbox One. These were the main talking points and the main games showcased during Microsoft's E3 conference. However, that's not all. We've got more names and more games coming to the platform either as exclusives or only launch exclusives, which means that they'll probably launch on other consoles later. Here is the full list of the games. Players Unknown Battlegrounds, gonna be a launch exclusive, coming in late 2017. Ori in the Will of Wisps, gonna launch on Windows 10 and Xbox One console exclusive, no release date yet. Deep Rock Galactic, Xbox One launch exclusive. Dragon Ball Fighter Z, a fighting game, gonna be coming out in early 2018. The Last Night, console launch exclusive, 2018. Black Desert, an MMO Xbox launch exclusive, early 2018. Super Lucky Tale, gonna come out on November 7th on Xbox One and Windows 10. Cuphead is going to be an Xbox One exclusive, will also come out on Windows 10 on September 29th. And here are the games that will launch as part of an ID at Xbox initiative. Osiris New Dawn, Raiders of a Broken Planet, Unruly Heroes, Path of Exile, Battle Right, Surviving Mars, Fable Fortune, Observer, Robocraft Infinity, Dunk Lords, Minion Masters, Forced to Duel, Brawl Out, Ooblets, Dark and Light, Strain Brigade, Riverbond, Hello Neighbor, Shift, and Conan Exiles. And that's a wrap on episode 2 of the wrap up. Let me know in the comments what did you think about the Project Scorpio aka Xbox One X reveal? Did you like the games that were showcased? Do you think Anthem will have good facial animations? If you liked the video, leave a like on it. If you did not, leave a dislike. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss out on a new episode of the wrap up. E3 is only picking up momentum. We still have Ubisoft and the Sony conferences ahead of us, so if you need company to watch these announcements as we happen, I might suggest heading over to my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash 
projects where I'll be watching them together with you. You can also follow me on Facebook and facebook.com slash and until next time, take care and bye for now.